You know I'm available, you know you can always call Whatever you need from me, you know I won't drop the ball You know you my all in all, I know you the god of all So just tell me what to do, I know you can never lose My storage is vacant, I'm yours for the taking Lord use me however you see fit When you call I'm bless you we are prophets lovi and maggie elias and we are here to invite you for our very first 
Partners Dinner on February 24th at 7 p.m. In this beautiful evening that we have in store for all of you, you'll be able to partner with the vision of the house for Revelation Nights, for all the in-house improvements, for Revelation Academy, for Revelation Network, and for the new building that God has in store for us and for all of you. We cannot wait to share this beautiful evening with all of you. Go to revelationchurchla.org to register. where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone born of the Spirit. Welcome, Revelation family, to another prophetic service. We are in the house of God. Wow, Eleanor, I, I'm... My spirit is elated to be here tonight. Me too. I am so excited. You know, I don't think Disneyland is the number one happiest place on earth for me. True, true. I think it's the presence of the living God. Yes. Just to step away from whatever we're doing for a few minutes and to be in his presence, to receive his peace, to be gathered together. What a better place to be. No, there's no better place to be. Not and more. with that being said, I also want to welcome our online family, all those who are watching from all over the world connected. We're so glad to have you here. Welcome. <laughs> Listen, I'm excited. Shout out to Revelation Nation. Know that there is no distance. Yeah, can we, can we wake it up for Revelation Nation? Listen, we know that many of you want to be here, but know that you are here because there is no distance in the spirit. Listen, while you're here, though, we want you to stop by the information booth where you can learn about everything Revelation Church. We have corporate prayer with none other than Apostle Gershon. Can we make some noise for Apostle? Listen, he's amazing. We have our Revelation Youth, middle school and high school age ministry. It is absolutely phenomenal. We have new merch. Our wow. merch is absolutely amazing. Real quick, can we, can we do this? Daughters of Revelation, make some noise. That sounds good. You can also find out anything pertaining to Daughters of Revelation, and you can also get the official Revelation newsletter. You know, Trey, one thing I really am intentional about this year is receiving everything that God has for me. Yes. And I, I like to say, you know, as vast as the ocean is, it does not reject raindrops. And one thing that I like to do <laughs> to add a little bit more rain... <laughs> <laughs> to add a little bit more rain is power shot in realms of meditation. How much more when the prophet himself comes and give us a daily word from the mouth of God himself that speaks into our lives and then he also prays with us. Why would anybody not want that? So make sure you sign up for that on prophetlovey.com. My God, there's another part that I love about power shots. It's also realms of meditation. My gosh, it is absolutely phenomenal. This part is a guided meditation that happens twice a week. I cannot tell you how my life has significantly changed just from these teachings. We get fed really well uh, Sundays and Thursdays, but that in between time, it is absolutely life changing. And so one thing that, as she said, I want you to be intentional about this year because this is the year of the wind. And so in this year, I want you to be intentional and make sure you go sign up for Power Shot because it is going to change your life. I agree. Amen. Listen, I love this church because we have a multitude of capacities, but one of our favorites is actually giving. And if you are online, make sure that you are following the instructions on the screen. And if you are in the sanctuary, please make sure that you are writing legibly. Yes, and another way to connect to us, especially if you're our online Revelation family, is through social media. We're everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, so make sure to turn those notifications on, like, follow, share, and if you have any further questions or you need a little bit more information on anything, feel free to go to revelationchurchla.org. Amen. Listen, and for those of you that are in the sanctuary and you're joining us, please be mindful to gather all 
of your belongings because we will only be able to keep personal belongings for two weeks. After that, I don't know what to tell you. Make sure you get all of your belongings and take everything with you as you exit the sanctuary. This is important, and this is to prevent anything that is lost, okay? So make sure after service you gather everything you came with and take it with you. So many exciting things happening here in this house. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much. It's so much. I'm sorry. I should have turned my phone off. I just got a notification. <laughs> I have a question for you. What yeah. are you doing February 14th? You know what? Before I answer that, I think we got a video. Okay. Let's check out the video. Let's check it out. <laughs> what if there was community where singles can come together, grow, and be encouraged at being their best selves? A place where it's about more than just being single. It's about having fun, being equipped, and embracing the principles of God in singleness. I'm Apostle JT Boyd. And I'm Evangelist Elena Boyd. And we're so thrilled to reintroduce to you SOLO, the Singles Ministry. SOLO stands for Singles on Lookout, on Lookout for Purpose, Elevation, Growth, and Community. To stay in the loop about the amazing events, activities, and all things SOLO, go to revelationchurchla.org to sign up. All right. Listen, we're ready to start this journey with you. get it this really is a prophetic household how did you know that's exactly what i was gonna ask you about i am my father's son i am my father's son <laughs> well i just wanted to say that you could join us for the kickoff event of the year with the solo ministry where we'll be screening one love the bob marley story and this event is exclusively for singles ages 18 and up I'm sorry, it's just adults this time, so no childcare will be provided. But you could secure a spot by Wednesday, February 7th. And once you've registered at revelationchurchla.org, you'll receive exclusive details about the event location. Wow, that's going to be absolutely... I might sneak in for that. I mean, you know, I might bring my boot thing. And, okay, you know. why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you feel me? Listen, Revelation Partners, it is your time. Can we make some noise for the partners of Revelation? Listen, it is your time to add a brick to the church of God and in what God is doing. At this partner's dinner, you will be able to know the vision and the mission of the hearts of the prophets of this house. You do not want to miss this. I am so excited for what God is doing in Revelation Church. We are changing the world. We're taking the world by storm with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And listen, if you want to be a part of that, this is your time to go do so. So make sure you go to revelationchurchla.org to sign up. Amen. And another group so active and alive all the time, growing in all the grace that is in this house, is our youth. Woo -woo. And yes. Amen. Give it up for Revelation Youth. Kids are fire. And Revelation Youth is going to have a service on February 2nd at 6.30 p.m. So make sure you bring your kids here in this house, Revelation Church, L.A., <laughs> and bring them over uh, so they could just continue to grow in the knowledge, in the understanding, in the wisdom, and in the grace of God and be everything that God has ordained them to be. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what else is happening here at Revelation Church? Listen, we have RISE applications for summer 2024. They are now. Amen. Come on now. That's what I'm talking about. 2024 summer, they are now open. So guess what? You can actually go sign up at revelationchurchla.org. Eleanor, I think yes. that's it for us today. I don't know about you. My spirit is still excited. I want to go worship. Can we? Can I we, am so, I was worshiping in my car, and I'm so ecstatic to worship here with all my brothers and sisters. Uh, but I think, should we do a little prayer first with Apostle you know Gershon? What? Ah, yeah, can we, can we prepare our hearts for prayer with Apostle? Make sure you stand on your yeah. feet, whether you are in the sanctuary or you are at home. Listen, you're about to be impacted by Jesus. We'll see y'all on the other side. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise in the house. Somebody give him glory in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to your neighbor or the partner next to you 
and tell your partner, neighbor, this is what the Lord says about you. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. I'm holding your hand tonight. Celebrating you tonight. Because I know that our God is able to do all things on our behalf. So neighbor, let's lift up our voice and pray. Rabba sota makata la brado shata baba baya rima zondele bebe 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 all over the all over the sanctuary lift your voice mere de de bo shabra nosta makota tata bradi andele bebe makata la bada raba zobra na mazete bebe madara raba zobra na mazondele de de baze. Raba baba raba zobra na makata la baba baba mazebere de de bajanda brana mazata raba baba na makonde le babe lift your family up before the throne of grace lift your endeavors up before the throne of grace raba baba zobara bakoste pray in the holy ghost pray in the understanding madele de de boja rama mama maka so para raba baba Ele de de bo sabra na mazon de le babe raba bara ba sende le de de baba rama katora mazanda baba baba ya ba de 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 bo mele de 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 bo sabra na mazon de le babe ikata la brada ba zonda la baba na makata raba ba na mazobra ende le de de bo sha mazende le de 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 bo sabra na mazon de ikete le bra na mazon da la baba baba Mazobra na mazendele de de bosh, eketele bara mama mama mazanda la baba, ele de de bosh abra na mazonda baba baba, mekete ele bara na mazonde, ikele bara dosta, mazoba na mazanda baba ya, rama mama maza, eketele bara na mazabra de 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 bosha, mazondele de de mazanda, lift your voice and thank the King of Glory. Thank the King of Glory for the victories, for the victories in the mighty name of Jesus. Mandele de de bo zabra na mazo ba 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 ba, maze ba ra 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 ba zabra na mazata, mazondele de de bo zha. Tonight is my time. Tonight is my day. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Makata tabara ba zobra da ba zere de de boja, ele de de boja brana ma zonde le bara ma 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 ma. Eke tata tabada ba rosta, le brana ma zonde bere ma kata la bara ba zo. Me de 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 boja nda ba na ma zote, ile de de boja brano sta mata. Thank you, Lord, that in your presence there is fullness of joy. And I will celebrate tonight. I will celebrate tonight because I know that my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what I should pray about or what I should think. So, Father, I thank you that our homes are blessed. I thank you that our families are blessed. I thank you that as we are gathered. In your presence, that we will taste the goodness of God. Hallelujah! Let 
Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to hold the neighbor's hand. And as you lift your voice, say, neighbor. neighbor. The word of God says where two or three agree. That it is done. So tonight, I agree with you that all things will work together for good on your behalf. Neighbor, there is a turnaround for good on your behalf. Neighbor, it is well with your family. It is well with your home. Neighbor, I celebrate you for the victories. Neighbor, I celebrate you for the victories. It is well with you. It is well with you. Now, if you know how to celebrate your neighbor, if you know that you know that you know that you know, if you know that God answers my fight, if you know that He is the God that makes a way, that makes a way, that shall you. Yeah, man. 
Everybody set free this evening. Let's put our hands together. See right the on. branches he who abides in me will forever be fruitful in me I am the way the truth and the life no one gets to the Father except that he comes through me yeah. so let not
never left me you've never forsaken me has he been there for you has he been there for you has he been faithful in your life have you seen him come through time and time again let me hear you shout hallelujah if God has been there for you oh faithful father you're a faithful father come on lift up your worship in this room you're a faithful God you are yeah you're a faithful father yes oh you're a faithful God you're a faithful God God from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same, yeah. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you it will come.
In the middle of the trial, in the middle of the storm. Yeah, I still praise you, I still worship you, I still lift you up. I'm gonna keep my joy, I'm gonna keep my joy, I'm gonna keep my faith. Oh, you are my strength, because the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on, somebody claim it, claim it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. person disrespected me I'll still bless you when that person betrayed me when that person hurt me oh I still bless you when I wasn't considered oh I still bless you oh I still bless you oh my God I will bless you yeah I still bless you I still love you hallelujah come on is that your heart posture Got a reason to bless your name. Got a reason to bless your name. And I'll still bless. I've got a reason to bless your name. I've got a reason to smile. Continue to lift your worship in this place. He is the King of glory. Every knee shall bow. Every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. He is the King. Come on and lift your worship in this place. Come on and lift your worship in this place. King of glory. King of glory. You are, you are.
just want to be with you. Say, King of Glory. I just want. I just want to be. Say, King of Glory. Come and fill this place. Time's aching. Oh, come on and give him the glow. Come on and give him the glow. what I'm going through. I will give you all of the praise. Friends turn their backs on you, right? But God, I'll give you all of the praise. That job has let you down. Oh God, I'll still give you the praise. That relationship's not working. But God, I'll give you the praise. Am I the only one? Come on and lift your praise. God, I'll give you all You deserve the praise. You deserve the glory. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. I've been through hell and back, but God, I'll still praise you. Is that your testimony? God, I'll still praise you. Cause you never left me, God. I'll still praise you. It was dark on the other side, but then I saw the light, God. So I'll
say holy, holy is a holy. Sing that one more time. Say holy, holy, holy is the, yeah. Jesus and give Jesus the praise tonight. Give Jesus the glory tonight. Give Jesus the honor tonight. Come on, lift your voice and give Jesus praise. Give Jesus glory. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, people of God, let's pray together. Let's pray together quickly. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory tonight. We give you honor tonight. We thank you for this great house. Father, we thank you for the light that you've sent to this house. We thank you for the leaders that are underneath the light that's in this house. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in Revelation Church. We thank you for what you are doing in Revelation Nation. We declare right now that this house is unstoppable. This house is unbreakable. Father, we thank you that everything that has been destined for this house shall be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you tonight for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We give you praise for it now in Jesus' mighty name. Now, if you love Jesus, show it by loving somebody else. 
Give somebody else a hug that's next to you. Hallelujah. Before you have your seat, before you have your seat, first of all, we want to thank God for all of the leaders of this house. You guys are doing an amazing job. Amen. Apostle, God bless you, sir. Prophetess, God bless you. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for the leaders of Hallelujah. Revelation Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen, I want you to do me a favor. I've been many places, many cities, many nations. And I'll tell you what, I have not met anybody like Prophet Lovin. Amen. 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 The higher he goes, the more humble he gets. Let's celebrate this great prophet, this great leader that God has blessed this church with. Not just a leader to this church, but a leader in the world. While you're clapping, clap for his wonderful wife, the prophetess Maggie herself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm excited to be with you tonight. Amen. I'm happy that my, my daughter is back with me, prophetess Double Grace. Amen. Love her so much. Amen. I see my family in the front row. Amen. Hallelujah. Coach AP. Amen. The divas in the house, her children, my nephews. God bless every one of you. We're excited to be with you tonight. Amen. How many of you came tonight expecting to receive something from the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, the Lord is going to do something amazing. Amen. I've been praying, really, really praying for this meeting. Amen. And the Lord gave me an instruction not to eat. Amen. And I know when the Lord tells me not to eat. There's going to be power in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to start off on a high note. I saw three things that were going to happen tonight during this service. And we, we're just going to start off on a high note right now. Amen. 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 There are many people within the next 10 minutes, your body is going to be healed. Hallelujah. I receive. Now, now Listen. I'm, I'm not just speaking or hyping. I'm telling you, everybody in this room that's sick, everybody in the overflow that's sick, I don't Prophet think you hear what I'm Scott, saying to you. Come on and celebrate Jesus. Come on and celebrate Jesus. I want to show you something quickly before I go into what the Lord gave me tonight. Amen. I'm going to ask the guys to go quickly to Matthew chapter 9, verse number 5 through 8. I just want to show you something. Because I'm going to pray a prayer. Of course, we have so many people here. It's going to shift the service. But I'm going to pray a prayer. I had the privilege of uh, being uh, around Ron Harbunke. He was preaching to a million people. How I many of you know the great Ron Harbunke? Amen. And, and do you know where I was at? I was in Kenya. I think your prophet was a, <laughs> may have been a small boy by then. I was in Kenya and I learned something. Uh, that I would never forget, but I want to share something with you quickly. It's only going to take me a few minutes. Amen. Go with me to Matthew 9, if you're not already there, verses 5 through 8. I'm going to read from the screen. What a tremendous upgrade. Wow. This place looks amazing. In Matthew chapter number 9, I want you to listen to what Jesus says now, starting at verse number 5. It says, whether it is easier to say, your sins be forgiven, or to say, arise and walk. Next verse. But that you might know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins. Now, I want you to notice he didn't say the Son of God, but he said the Son of Man. That's very, very important. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, arise, take up your bed and go unto your house. He didn't pray for the sick. He gave a command. Come Amen. On. Amen. I'm going to say that again. He did not pray for the sick. He gave a command. What was his command? 
Arise. Somebody shout arise. Arise. Take up your bed. Go on to your house. Next verse. And he arose and departed to his house. Next one. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Next verse. And as Jesus passed from thence, he saw a man named Matthew. Amen. And we know the story about Matthew. Now, here's the part that I want you to hear in verse number five. This one is very, very important. And I'm going to ask you a question before we go into this. All right. How many of you have ever blown it before? I mean blown it. Uh, let me put my feet up. Everything up. All right. After you blew it, what did you do? After you blew it, after you messed up, how did you approach God? What did you do? What did you do? So, did you ask him to forgive you? Okay, watch this. In verse number five, and it's a nugget that most people miss, Jesus says, whether it is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say arise and walk. So it goes to the next verse, and Jesus said, verse six, but that you might know that the Son of Man how, have power on earth to do what? Forgive sins. sins. People of God, I discovered something when I was reading the word of God. And do you know what I discovered? Anywhere God offers the forgiveness of sins, he also offers deliverance from what sin caused. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I don't think you heard what I just said to you. Yes, yes. Let me say it to you this way. Anywhere in the scripture where there's the forgiveness of sin, there is also offered the healing of the body. Listen, having your body healed is as easy as having your sins forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. Man of God, why are people not getting healed? Because their faith level is not there. They, they don't believe that all the redeemed of the Lord have to do. You have to understand that to be redeemed, it means that you are released from a penalty by the payment of a price. You are released what? From a penalty. I'm going to teach you a little bit. By the payment of a price. Amen. How many understand that Jesus paid for our sins with his body and with his blood? Amen. And so now because of that, think about this now. The preaching that most of us have received. Let's exclude Revelation Church because it's a house of revelation. But the preaching that most of us receive, we have so much faith that when we mess up a sin, we can go to God and ask him to forgive us. How many of you believe that if you ask God to forgive you according to the word of God, you're forgiven? Amen. Amen. Okay. Notice what Jesus said. Whether it is easier to say. Your sins are forgiven you. Watch this. Arise, take up your bed and walk. He goes into verse number six again. But that you might know that the Son of Man have power on earth to do what? Forgive sins. Listen, wherever sins can be forgiven, whatever sin has ravaged in your life, listen to me, you are due for a payback. Amen. Hallelujah. I receive it. This is not my message. I, I really didn't want to go too deep into this. So we, we read what's called the doctrine of the atonement. I'm going to just give it to you in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says, surely he had borne. He was our scapegoat. He has borne our sins. Born means to carry away. He has borne our sins. Listen to me. Did you know, people of God, that God took the sinless Christ and he poured upon the sinless Christ your sins, my sins, the sins in the past, the sins in the present, and the sins in the future. I'm here to tell you tonight, things you have not even done yet are forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could, could you tell somebody you have forgiveness on credit? You have forgiveness on credit. credit. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, so listen now. It says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for what? The chastisement meaning the punishment needful to obtain our peace and well-being was upon who? And with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. Now I'm going to give you the big one in Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Psalm 103 should be good enough to prove it to you that wherever sins are forgiven. Listen to me tonight. Some of you, listen, I don't know what life you lived before you came to Christ. Maybe there's something, I heard one person preaching one day in our area, and I'm telling you nothing, I, I felt like going down and just snatched them. Have you ever heard somebody preach and you just wanted to snatch the mic from them? Because they were not preaching the full gospel. The guy said, listen, just accept Jesus. He said, it's okay. You can go to heaven with your cancer. You can go to heaven, amen, with diabetes. You can go to heaven with venereal disease. You can go to heaven this. Can I tell you, people of God, we don't need healing when we go to heaven. Come on. You didn't hear what I said. We don't need to be healed when we go to heaven. Yes. It's a benefit for right now. Yes. Psalm 103, are you ready? Yes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Do what? Bless, Bless the, the Lord, Lord, oh my soul. Can I tell many of you the reason why you're down is because you're unthankful. Come on. You're unthankful. You're like the nine lepers where your problem was stopped, but your situation wasn't restored. Come on. Come on. The nine lepers got healed, but they, didn't get, they, did, they did not get made whole. The one leper came to Jesus and he began to thank Jesus for healing him. And the moment he thanked Jesus for healing him, he said, go your way. You've elevated now. You are yes. not just healed. You're whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ay, ay, ay. Every problem that leprosy has caused, he said, now that you're whole, you are being paid back. If parts of your body fell off, they're being restored. You're whole. Bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me. All that's what? In me. Come on, listen. I want you to, the little bit of complaining you have in you, I want you to get it out with praise. Hallelujah. The little bit of murmuring that you have on the inside of you. That, that little thing inside of you that wonders, that knows that God can do it. But can God do it for me? If you open up your mouth and begin to give God praise Hallelujah. right now, all that little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yes. That means everything within me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is what? In me. All that is what? Within me. Now listen, watch this. You should not be worried about the person on your row that's relaxed while you're praising the Lord. They don't know yes. what God has brought you out of. Yeah. They don't know. Uh, I don't think y'all want to have no church in here tonight. Well, Hallelujah. Somebody that God brought you out, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't mess around with me in here tonight. I've had too many near death experiences yes. to survive, to rob God of his praise. Hallelujah. Those of you that are recipients of mercy, open up your mouth and tell Jesus something wonderful. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering us. Bless Lord, the Lord. Oh, my soul, and all that's within me. Bless what? His holy name. Bless what? His, His holy name. name. His holy name. Next verse. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Here's the problem now. And forgetting that what? His all benefits. His benefits. Forgetting that what? All His benefits. That's one of the fathers of deliverance. Bless you, sir. Forgetting that what? All his benefits. Forgetting that what? All, All his benefits. benefits. Funny story. I heard this. I never forgot this as a young preacher. One day a man was going on the cruise. And as the man goes on the cruise, a pastor, he goes on the cruise. And the people notice that he never came out for dinner. As a matter of fact, the man for the whole cruise. Can you imagine? A cruise where food is everywhere. He ate crackers and water. And drunk water. Crackers, drunk water. 
So by the time the cruise was over, the captain asked him, he said, sir, I noticed you never came for dinner, you never came for lunch, you never came for breakfast, you, never, you just eat, you ate crackers and water. He's, the man said, all I paid for was the cruise. The captain said, didn't you realize that when you paid for the cruise, the food was included? Hallelujah. The benefits. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. See, the problem is we got cracker and water Christians when Jesus is ready to erase cancer. He's ready to erase diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. He's Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not. Forget not. All his benefits. All what? All his, his benefits. benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Now it goes specific scripturally. Next verse. Who forgiveth what? All thine iniquities. Who forgives what? All thine iniquities. Who forgives what? All thine iniquities. You know, it's so funny that the church puts more penalties on people than Jesus does. Come on. Wow, wow, wow. You, you, you didn't hear what I just said. He forgives all your iniquities. I wish I could go deep with this verse, but I can't mess with it. Because there's, there's sin, there's go sins, there's transgressions, there's iniquities. But I'm not going to mess with it. Who forgives all your iniquities? What, did he do? what does he do right after that? He, why does it keep mentioning healing when it talks about forgiving sin? Listen to me. Somebody that's in a wheelchair, somebody that's walking by way of canes, listen to me. Get ready to tell that cane in that wheelchair bye bye. Yes. Hallelujah. You're not here yet. Come You're going to make me run to the overflow. We're here. We're here. Why? Because when Jesus died, he paid the price, number one, for your sins. Can I tell you, people have gone before sin entered the world. There was no sickness. There was no disease. There was no poverty. Amen. There was no struggle. There was nothing evil or bad. Jesus paid the price for what? All in he paid the price for sin. Now that you are free from sin, salvation comes with benefits. Amen. It Amen. comes with benefits. Are you going to go to heaven on crackers and water? No. Or are you going to receive every... Somebody shout, I receive. I receive. Listen, if you are dealing with any ailment in your body, I want you to jump up quickly. I'm not coming to you. I want you to jump up and I want you to put your hand on top of your head. And I'm going to pray right now and I'm telling you, I want you to release your faith. Hallelujah. You don't have to beg for it. You're a son. It's your right. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm not praying, I'm commanding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak to the spirit of infirmity. Yes. I speak to disease. I speak to any demonic spirit that's hiding behind this sickness. I speak to those with crippling ailments. I speak to those with any kind of infirmity in this room, in the overflow, online. And I declare tonight, be healed. Be healed. I said be healed. Call about be healed. Come on, just pray for about one minute. Just pray for about one minute. Hallelujah. Not only did God want you to be healed, you are a healer. You are an instrument of healing. Come on and lift your voice. Lift your voice. Don't pray to get healed. Command sickness to go. Command disease to go. Command infirmity to go. Your sins are forgiven. Now you have a right for healing. In the name of Jesus, there are no incurables in the presence of God. Father, we thank you. Let angels, hallelujah, that assist in healing, release creative miracles. Creative miracles. In 
on the outside of people's body and on the inside of people's body. Let creative miracles be released right now. Repeat after me, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I don't hear you. I hear the mics. I don't hear you. I want to hear the people. Say, I'm healed. I am healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands and give God thanks right now. Thank you. Give him thanks right now. Give him thanks right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Now listen, many of you, as you're sitting under the word, you're going to start feeling some shifts and changes that have manifested in your body. But I want you to know, even before you feel anything, it's already done. Amen. Amen. I receive. Hallelujah. Go with me to Genesis. Go with me to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Starting at verse number 1. We're going to go to verse number 2. And it's going to be unusual. It's going to be unusual. Amen. Genesis chapter number one, starting in verse number one in the beginning, beginning of creation, beginning of time. God created the heaven and the earth. Now, I'm not going to break all of this down because it's too much revelation. I'm going to wind up getting stuck in a few words. But in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness. Somebody say darkness. Darkness. Was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse number 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God said what? Let Let there there be be light. light. And there was light. Hallelujah. I want you to look over quickly at the person next to you and tell them, you're giving a prophecy to them. Declare to them, let there be light. Be light. Let there be light. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let there. Be light. Hallelujah. Uh, now I want you to understand tonight. That when we read in verse number two. When God begins to speak, I want you to notice something before God was speaking because I want to minister to people tonight uh, and I need people to understand uh, that if you understand uh, the Hebrew calendar and you understand the difference between the Hebrew calendar and the Gregorian calendar and you understand how God works, you begin to understand that God does not begin anything in the day. Come on. Come on. Anytime God is ready to conceive something. Anytime God is ready to begin something. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. Because somebody feels like they're in the dark. Somebody feels like they are in the place where they are never coming out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God sent me by tonight just to let you know that if you are in the dark, you are not at your end. You are just at your beginning. I receive. Hallelujah. Things are going to get better than they are right now. I receive. I wish somebody would clap their hands by faith. I feel the power of God. Hallelujah. Now as you clap your hands, 
You are notifying your emotions that are out of whack. Come on. As you clap your hands, you are notifying everything around you and letting it know that I'm not at my end, I'm just at my beginning. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Ah, sit down. In the beginning, God Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. And we understand creation principles that everything that God creates, it's good. Everything that God creates, either it's good or very good. Amen. But all of a sudden, we go into verse number two. And as we go into verse number two, amen, the earth that was created to be dry land, all of a sudden is without form and void and darkness is covering the face of the deep. As a matter of fact, in another translation, it doesn't say that the earth was without form and void it says that the earth was in a chaotic state I'm here to prophesy to somebody's life that looks like it's in chaos Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here to prophesy tonight to, to somebody's family business church ministry that looks like it's in a chaotic state Hallelujah. God, I don't understand. When are you going to bring me out of the chaos? This is good. A chaotic state means that I feel confused. In other words, apostle, if I entered into your house while you were not home, and I took your couch and put it in your bathroom. I took your refrigerator. Come on here somebody. And put it in one of the bedrooms. And I took your house and I ramshacked it and put everything in different positions. Number one, when you walk in, you will immediately feel confused. Number two, when you walk in, not only will you feel confused, but if you're from the hood like me, you're going to start looking around because you're going to think somebody robbed you. Amen. Hello in here. Who, who, who robbed me? And, 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 and then all of a sudden, you go upstairs, you notice the refrigerator. You go into your bathroom, you notice the couch. And you say, wait, ho hold up now. I, I'm confused, but there's nothing missing. Wow. There's nothing missing. What it is, is everything is in the wrong position. Wow, wow, wow. Christian apostle. Can I tell many of you, you are the right person? You've got the right idea. You've got the right giftings. But you might be connected to the wrong people. Wow, this is good. You are the right person. Come on. You got the right idea. You got the right gifts. You might be connected to the right people, but you are in the wrong place. told Abraham I want you to go to the place that I'm going to reveal to you hallelujah maybe this the reason why there are people all over the world that keep feeling like if I just get to Revelation Church if I just get to California Y'all don't hear me in here if I can just get to the house of light yes Maybe the chaos would end. But there's one thing that you're missing. I want to encourage you tonight. Many of you are in the dark concerning situations. You're in the middle of chaotic, chaotic living. Maybe there's chaos, again, as I said, in your business, in your career, in the things that you're trying to accomplish. But I want you to hear this here. 
Listen to how good God is. Hey, Esther. Listen to how good God is. He's so awesome that he does not wait for you to come out. Wow. You're teaching. You're teaching. He does not wait for you to go to the other side. He said, this is what I'm going to do for you, baby. Let me talk to you like grandma talked to you. This is what I'm going to do for you. The first thing I'm going to do is before I bring you out, I'm going to come into your situation and I'm just going to rub you down a little bit. I'm just going to caress you a little bit. I'm just going to swab you a little bit just to let you know that I'm there. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are missing a good place. For the Bible says that in the midst of the darkness, where do we find the raw cockadash of the Holy Spirit? We find the Holy Spirit hovering over the face of the deep. There's only one other scripture in the Bible that likens what the Holy Spirit was doing in this verse. And when you translate it, it, it lets us know that the Holy Ghost was actually sitting on the earth like a mother hen sits on eggs. Wow. This is deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you things have not changed yet. But I want you to know you are in a Holy Ghost environment. Hey. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I said you are in a Holy Ghost environment. Yes. Yeah. You are in a church that fast. Hey. You are in a church that pray. You should be making more noise than this. You are in a uh, yeah. you are in a place where the Holy Ghost can have his way. Yes. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God hovered or brooded over the face of the deep. And then God said, and then God did what? Said. See, God has not spoken yet because you have not built up to that prerequisite. In other words, God says there are some things he, you have to understand. Let me try to help somebody. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. People of God, you are in a kingdom church. You're in a kingdom-minded church. You are a citizen of the kingdom. What you did in your last church that worked, it don't work here. Amen. You, you, you didn't hear what I just said to you. Pastor, what are you trying to communicate? Watch this. You are like the David. No, no, David's one of my guys. You are like the David. Your heart is right. You love to worship God. You love to magnify God. But the problem with you is you are trying to do what you used to do under a new grace. Come on. You're not understanding. Uh, let me give you a tidbit of part two of the kingly anointing. When David entered into the kingly anointing or David became the king, do you know what David did? He tried to serve God how he used to serve God. He tried to do what he used to do and it wasn't working. Wow. Remember, David had no protocol. David had no structure. David had no order. David was just radical. David just had a heart for God. But can I tell you, once you cross over, can I tell you this church, watch this now, is about to go into tens of thousands. You're not understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and celebrate. I said, wait, hold up. Last time I came, it was already organized and structured, but they done gone to another level. Oh, come on. You, you don't hear me. What I'm trying to explain to you, people of God, that in order to go to the next level, everything that's chaotic and out of order got to get in order. Yes. God says, I'm going to break you through, but first you got to get in order. 
God says you are praying for a house, but you go to sleep with a, with a sink full of dishes every night in your apartment. Am I telling the truth? Now, if you can't master one kitchen, how you gonna master five kitchens? Come on. Come on. Am I talking to anybody tonight? You're talking to us. Be seated. I'm just getting started. In the middle of the chaos, the Holy Ghost got the nerve to come in evangelists and just hover over the face of the deep. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in those churches where you know it's called to greatness? It's not structured yet. It's not organized yet. But when you walk in, you feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can sense the presence of God. You, you, you can sense that God is in the room. All right, now, let me go further. All of a sudden, after the Holy Spirit hovers over the face of the deep, the Bible says, God said, let there be light. Another way to say it is light be. Light be. But let me take you into the Hebrew. Yes. Folks, I don't know if you're ready for where I'm going. We're ready. <laughs> let there be light or light be. Or, watch this. Not just let there be light or light be, but let it be light. Mm. Not just let there be light, but let it be light. Repeat after me, let it be light. Let, let it be light. Repeat after me again, let it be light. Let, let it be light. light. Let there be light. Okay, now. Quickly put up Genesis chapter 1. You guys know all of this. I'm just giving you a, rehearse, a rehearsal lesson. Genesis 1, 14 through 19. Just for those that don't know it. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Verse 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Verse 16. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Now, there are some people that are, let me just give you a nugget. There are some people that are trying to shine, but they are not under a greater light. Wow. They are a lesser light. And the light that's coming through them is coming through the greater light. And what winds up happening, imagine if the moon no longer submitted to the sun. Come on, come on. This is good. This is good. The problem with many believers is they think that they can shine without a greater light. Come on. Teaching good. The teaching apostle. Are you listening? God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Next verse. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. Verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Last verse, verse 19. In the evening, in the morning, were what day? Fourth, fourth day. day. The fourth day. So simple. Many of you guys know this already. On the fourth day, God created light that came from the sun, the moon, and the stars. Are you listening? Yes. All right. And one aspect of the light was to give light throughout the day. One aspect of the light was to give light throughout the night. Isn't it interesting that even when you hit night, there's still light? Mm. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Uh, if you only knew where we were going. But watch this. So as we go back to verse number two and three, my question to you tonight is if God created the light on the fourth day, where is the light coming from on the first day? Wow. The teaching apostle. If God created the light on the fourth day that came from the sun, the moon, and the stars, where is this light coming from? I'm here to let you know we have misinterpreted this verse. Come on. Well, no, God, you're going to make me talk to you. You keep standing up. You've been in my spirit since last week. Watch this. God said, let there be light. But it was not sunlight. It was not starlight. It was not moonlight. <laughs> come on, come, come on. on. Come on. What did God say? Let there be light or light be. I'm going to give you one other lesson before I go crazy because I can holy, I can barely hold it now. You have to understand that, that when you study the Hebrew and you study especially the alphabets in Hebrew, you begin. See, let me share this with you. One of the reasons why so many people in the body of Christ are bad teachers is because they're only contextual preachers and teachers. If it's not in context, they don't say it. But you have to understand there are layers of revelation when it comes to the word. Yes. 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 Let me tell you this. Y'all, y'all really don't know how bad of a boy Prophet Lovey is. Amen. Amen. That man's a problem, folks. Y'all should be clapping better than that because you get taught by this prophet of God every week. Hallelujah. You don't realize every week, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. (laughs) Be seated. We're almost there. So God says, let there be light. Now, this is what's powerful. In the Hebrew alphabet, we understand that for every alphabet, there is a number or a numerical system. Yes. Amen? Am I correct? Yes. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things, let me tell you this. I ain't even going to say that. I was going to say something, but it's going to take me down another path. Listen to me. So I discovered something as I was praying about this. And looking into this, I discovered that there is another word in the Hebrew with the same numerical value. Come on. Listen to me carefully. See, some of you, after I share this with you, you are never going to give up again. Amen. Amen. You, you didn't hear me. watch this my brother I wish I don't have time to testify my brother watched me suffer when I say suffer I mean suffer for 14 years my brother watched hundreds of people apostle walk away from me my brother listened to people say he will never rise again he will never make it He will never fulfill the prophecy. But what they did not know is the God of all grace was by my side. Oh, God have mercy. God gave me grace to endure what I didn't enjoy. You didn't hear what I just said. The problem with you is you are looking for the joy before you endure. Mm. 
Come on. Come on. There are some things you just got to go through. Yes. Hi, yeah, yeah. There are some people that just got to walk away. There are some people that just got to doubt you. But I'm here to tell you tonight, there is a God. Yes. There is a God. Hallelujah. That will never leave you. Come yeah. on. Nor forsake you. Be seated. Oh, my God. Do you want to know the word in the numeric that has the same numerical value as light? Yes. Do you know what the word is called? Watch this. It's called secret. Wow. This is good. I said it's called secret. secret. See, the reason why you need a prophet mm. Come on. is because you had enough confirmation. You, you, you had enough confirming words. I, I don't know if you hear me now. You had enough people tell, oh, yep, yep, God's saying that to me because that, that's, that, that's in my spirit. God told me that. Can I tell you today the job of a prophet is to bring light where there is mysteries. Come on. Come on. This is good. You are teaching. The job, watch this now, of not just prophetic people, but of a prophet. And let me tell you this. One of the hardest things about being a prophet is having to disclose information. What do you do when you want to tell somebody something, but you can't? What do you do when somebody is telling you they belong? I'm coming down in a minute. They belong in Chicago, but you saw Los Angeles. What do you do when somebody got one spiritual father? But the prophet tells you, that ain't your spiritual father. That's your spiritual father. See, the problem with you is you are trying to manipulate mysteries. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get there in a minute. What I'm trying to tell you, listen to me. The way God likes to operate is he hides a thing. Come on. Come on. I, I guess we don't got no intercessors or, or praying people in here. God will hide a thing in plain sight. Your miracle will be right in front of you, but God hid it. Wow. Your spouse will be right in front of you, but God hid it. Your millions will be right in front of you, but God hid it. Come on. God said, what I want you to do is dig a little more, yeah. press a little more, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fast a little more. Listen tonight, Jesus said, who said? Jesus. Jesus. That there is nothing hidden. There is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said your riches is there, but it's hidden in secret places. You're yeah, 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 not hear me. God said, I, I, oh yeah, it's hidden in Isaiah 45, it's hidden in, in, in secret places. So God says, what I want you to do is I want you to go to such a level of light that you live with no shadows. Woo! I receive. You, you, you didn't hear me. In the presence of God, there is, there's light. 
and there is no darkness at all. That means in God's presence, there is no shadows. Let me tell you this. Hallelujah. You are about to go to a level where success can no longer hide from you. You are about to go to a level where money can no longer hide from you. You are about to go to a level where breakthrough can no longer hide from you. Why? Because God is saying tonight, let there be light. Somebody shout fire. Fire. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Be seated. I'm almost done. Let there be. Let there be light. Bishop Earthquake, let me come down and talk to you, sir. You can be seated, sir. It's an honor to stand in front of you. Sir, your best season is not behind you. Hallelujah! Sir, your best season is not behind you. Your best season is right ahead of you. Your best season is right ahead of you. Listen to me. Listen to me. God allowed me to know of you and to watch you years ago. And I used to always say, man, I want to meet this man. I, want, I said, this man is a father of deliverance. And can you imagine, man of God, everything you imparted in the last generation, you are seeing Revelation Church move in the... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sir, I want you to understand. Listen to me. You are not just a minister in this generation, but you are an apostolic father. Hallelujah. Sir, do you have a school? You have a school in... Now, I don't... I wish I can talk to you about Lancaster, how deep it is. Amen. But, sir, I pray God allowed you to connect with my brother so you can connect with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, sir, listen to me. The manuscripts that's in you, the revelation that's in you, you are not going to leave this earth with those things on the inside of you. Hallelujah. 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 There are other men and other women that are going to carry the mantle of Bishop Earthquake Kelly. Can somebody give God praise for this general of the faith? You ain't praising God strong enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can celebrate Jesus. We'll talk later. Evangelist, the Bible says in Isaiah 60. I don't know if you guys are ready. We're ready. I, I need my musicians now. I feel Pentecostal tonight. <laughs> Isaiah 60 says, Arise. Uh oh. Arise and what? Shine. Now, the problem with the church is the church. Not this one. Don't look like heaven. Because our forefathers taught us that heaven was bland. Heaven was black and white. Heaven don't have no color spectrum. Heaven is not a beautiful place. And when I say beautiful place, I mean decked out and adorned with all kinds of colors. As a matter of fact, in our days, if you were colorful, you were Jezebel. But I'm here to tell you tonight, there is a prophetic people 
There are prophets in the land. Yes. Yes. Anybody was in New York last week when Prophet Passion came out dressed like Michael Jackson? Folks, that man was dressed to the T. I sat there with the father of New York. He said, is this the man the church is calling a heretic? He says, the church is crazy. This man is sound. He's a sound preacher. Come on. I want you to know, listen to me. This church is about to do church like you never saw it done. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate Jesus. I wish somebody would get excited about the newness of the move of God in this generation. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh man, I don't want the old folk to get mad with me. But who said, watch this, who said I couldn't praise the Lord with pink? Who said I can't have a jacket that glitter and still love Jesus? Who said I can't wear designer clothes and still be on fire for God? Well, listen, the church better get an update because there's a church by the name of Revelation Church. The people are a blessed people. The people are a powerful people. The people are a stylish people. But they will out pray you, out fast you, out give you, out evangel. Come on. Listen, Archangel. There's some women looking for a husband Uh but the issue is watch this we know the story of Adam and Eve when Eve was presented before Adam Adam said whoa Adam didn't say whoa about anything spiritual Adam didn't say whoa because she got a prayer life Adam saw bumps where he don't got bumps hello and here somebody And Adam said, whoa, tap your neighbor, tell them it's your season of light. It's your season of light. You got to dress to impress. impress. I want to tell somebody tonight, light is coming to your closet. Light is coming to your pocketbook. Light is coming to your business. Light is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know that light is coming to your life, open up your mouth and give God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Do me a favor. I told you I feel real Pentecostal tonight. Step out of your seat, high five three people, and tell them let there be Let there be light. 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 The Bible says, Arise. What does it say? Arise. What does it say? Arise. In other words, get up. Get up. You can't get nothing sitting still. Come on. I'm going to say that again. You can't get nothing sitting still. 
Let me tell you something. Prophet last Saturday prophesied, Prophet Passion, that revival was, was coming. How many of you heard that? I was sitting there. Prophet, just throw me the mic for one minute. Of course, it didn't happen. I was just praying. But do you know who revival is coming through? Do you know who is coming through? Elisha stands up in the midst of a famine. Folks, why fear what's coming? You're connected to a prophet. Come on. Why Come on. fear the changes that's coming in the earth? You're connected to a prophet. Yes. <laughs> the prophet said, tomorrow about this time. In other words, in 24 hours. Tomorrow about this time. He prophesies what was going to take place. Amen. A man on whom the king leaned. Isn't it sad when a dummy's on your staff? Somebody that disrespects the prophet. That's a dummy. He said if the Lord would make windows in heaven, this is the only way this is going to happen. The prophet said you will see it with your eyes. But you will not eat nothing of it. Here's the part that shook me, Archangel. Uh, uh, here's the part. The prophecy is lingering. Tomorrow about this time. Guess who caught the prophecy? Guess who caught the prophecy? Four leprous men that were sitting at the gate of Samaria. Oh God. Listen to me. The leprous were in a colony. They dwelt in a community amongst each other. And as they sat there, they began to talk one to another. They said, why are we sitting here until we die? Tap somebody, tell them. God said, get up. God said, get up. Get up. God said, get up. If you can't do nothing else, but get up and clap. If you can't do nothing else, but get up and lift your hands in the... Get up. 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 Oh, yeah. Arise. Arise and what? Shine. I wish I could preach to you from Isaiah 60. Arise and shine. Why? For your light has come. Hallelujah. Your light has come. It's time for you to radiate light. <laughs> your light has come. And the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the splendor of God, the magnificence of God has risen upon you. It's risen where? Upon me. It says gross darkness will cover the earth. Watch this. So when are you going to get your brightest? When are you going to get your brightest? You are going to get your brightest when gross darkness. Not just moral depravity, but people that are living without solutions. People that are living without answers. See, your business is not succeeding because it doesn't answer problems. That's good. How is it that during the Great Depression, people died while others became rich? It's because light hit them. And when light hit them, 
they produced something that answered questions they produced something that brought answers to problems tonight before we leave this building in the main church and in the overflow light is coming to every person light is you're not receiving this I said light is coming to every person I might as well go all out because they probably calling me heretic already so some of you tonight I'm going to touch you and you're going to instantly maybe not tonight maybe within the next several days you're going to enter into a dream I receive Come on. And, and when you enter into a dream your light will come are you listening please be seated I know my time is up there's just one place I have to hit thank you sir there's one place I was about to start dancing when you said hit it that sound like that sound like my home somebody know what I'm talking about listen now now this is the part that I got to kind of bring it down a little bit this part is very important You have to understand that I love God's church. And because of that, I can't just minister and preach. It's got to be something that lasts. It's got to be something that strengthens the house, that brings it to the next place. This is my last scripture. I missed skipped over half of them 2nd Samuel chapter 2 verses 15 through 22 this part right here is called don't let the light of Revelation Church and Revelation Nation go out look at somebody and tell them it's time to stay lit. It's time to stay lit. It's time to stay lit. Second Samuel, chapter number 21, verses 15 through 22. And this is where we close. Once again, once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. Once, what's that word? Again. Once. Again. Once. Again. Now, I was just here last year. Thank God for so much grace Prophet Lovi has extended towards me in this house. But I was just here last year. It was a lot different than it is right now. The problem with the church is when God gives us rest, we don't prepare for the next battle. This is good. Please hear me to the fathers that are in this house, the watchmen, the people that stand with the prophet that's in this house. You have to understand when you defeat a giant, it will be a lifetime battle. I want to say this again. When you bring down, not a regular, not a regular person, a champion. Hear me tonight. You are under a giant killer. Amen. 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 Are you hearing me? You are under a giant killer. Now, I know many of you are excited about that. But I wanna, I'm, I'm wondering if you're excited about once again. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David's whole kingship, the Philistines never stopped. Folks, 
no matter how bad you embarrass Satan, he's coming back. Very true. Are you hearing me? Now, please hear the wisdom in this. You're going to say, where, where, is, where are we going with this? It's going to blow your mind. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines, and he became? Exhausted. He became? Exhausted. exhausted. He became? Exhausted. exhausted. You have to guard against your leader becoming tired. Amen. 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 This is good. Why prophetess are so many people quitting the ministry? I ask myself the question, why are rabbis not quitting? This is good. Why are rabbis not pulling up to the synagogue, sitting in the driveway and going, do I want to live today or do I want to go and share the Torah with the people? No, I don't feel like living today. Boom, blow their brains out. Do you hear rabbis quitting and giving up? I have a whole teaching behind this. I want you to know, church, we're mishandling God's leaders. Come on. Do you know why your leader will fly to another part of the world and try to hurry up back? It's not that he does not trust his leaders. It's that he's so happy with Revelation Church. He Come on. Come on. You are treating him well. Amen. Amen. You're not hearing me today. Most churches, the leader can't wait to leave. Oh, they want me to preach somewhere? Oh my God. This is my time to get on out of here. For these folk drive me crazy. <laughs> Next verse. Next verse. So he became exhausted. And Ishbi Banab, one of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 shekels and who was armed with a new sword, said, I'm going to kill David. Listen to me. I learned something about the spirit realm. It is dangerous to go up and then come down. All these devils, listen, your man of God is going from city to city, casting out devils. All these devils, Bishop, this man is casting out. Folks, hear me today. That realm has memories like elephants. They never forget. And they are looking for a better opportunity to come in and strike. Are you hearing me? He was armed with a new sword. He said, I'm going to kill David. Next verse. We're almost done. But Abishai, son of Zariah, came to David's rescue. What was his name? Abishai, son of Zariah, came to David's rescue. Wait, hold up now. When have we ever seen David get close to getting killed? When? People of God, please remember this. God taught me this in South Africa several months ago. He said, son, tell my church that no one is a leader forever. Tell my church the first thing they need to do on day one of leadership is prepare their, repair, uh, prepare their replacement. Leadership is temporary. Are you hearing me? Why do you think I keep bringing my daughter everywhere with me? Why do you think I keep bringing several other people with me everywhere? Let me tell you this again. I've been around a long time. Your man of God works tirelessly. Two o'clock, he's still teaching. Three o'clock, he's still giving a lesson. I said, man, I got to go to the gym to keep up with this guy. My goodness, just teaching, 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 sharing, teaching, hugging, loving, teaching, sharing, sharing. I said, my goodness. But look at this. David later on gets tired, almost gets killed. David's men swore to him saying, this is the part that I want you to hear. 
Never again will you go out with us to battle. We are never letting you go out again with us to battle, David. Why? David, not, not snakes that most leaders are around. See, most leaders want the leader to go out to battle so that they can take his place. Pastor Omar, you ain't you still going? You, you're not tired yet? Pastor, why are, you, why are you losing your stomach? Keep your stomach. Keep your... Pastor, we, we were planning on your exit early. But the problem they didn't understand, I had a vision of me at 90. Come on. And I saw a 90-year-old me that couldn't move around. And I saw a 90-year-old me that was still agile and still able. I said, I'm going to take that agile one. Amen. Come on. Listen. David's men said, never again will you go out with us to battle. Hear this part. So that the light of Israel. So that what? Light of Israel. Get the revelation. They called David the light of Israel. Yes. Wow. You, you, you're not hearing me now. See, because the, the religion in you is blocking this revelation. No, 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 no. Jesus, apostle, is the light. But did not Jesus tell his disciples and Matthew? Not only did he tell them that you are the salt of the earth. Come on. He told them, you are the light of the world. Yes. When I said, let it be light, it's because I wanted to send you to dark places to light it up. Yeah. People of God, you must give honor where honor is due. Your man of God has lit up the West Coast. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me in here. The West Coast has never seen ministry like this. Yeah. Prophet, y'all don't hear me. Prophet. Please stand with me. This is a teaching amongst leaders, but as you guys discuss amongst each other, are you going to let the light that God has given you in this church and in Revelation Nation go out? Why are all these people, someone text me, and I said, man, I wish this person was close to me so I could just smack him upside the head. <laughs> First of all, did I ask you to prophesy to me? Who gave you permission to talk to me? Uh, Y'all didn't know I was African? <laughs> no, I'm not African-American. I'm 78% African. I move in authority. First of all, why didn't you ask me, can you prophesy to me? Who told you to write me anything about my brother? Can I tell you the lie that you just sent me is falling upon your own head because you sent it to the wrong apostle. Amen. Amen. J Jamal, you didn't tell these folk about me. Listen to me. Folks, when God tells me something and when God tells me to link with a person, the entire world can be against them. And if God tells me to link with that person, I'm going to link arms with that person and I'm going to dare somebody to try to touch this person while I'm linked arms. Y'all don't hear me. Come on. Folks, the world, the world, 
Please hear me today. The world is trying to put out the light of your David. Are you just going to sit there and let your family down your David? And let your family criticize your David? And let people around, listen to me. Hallelujah. Oh, prophet, they saying this about you. Why did you even watch it? Come on. Come on. Why did you even listen? You suspect now. I mean, you're in the same city, same place. I guess y'all don't follow sports. Do y'all know some of these athletes, when playoffs come, they shut all social media down. So they don't have to listen to any negativity. And they just, they lock in to what they are trying to do. Revelation Nation, Revelation Church, I need you to lock in. Yes. I need you to lock in. Yes. I said I need you to lock in. Yes. As a matter of fact, quickly, lock arms with somebody right now. Lock arms with somebody right now. I want you to lift up your voice and pray for Prophet Lovi. Pray for Prophet, uh, Prophetess Maggie. I know you're calling Papa and Mama. Pray for them. Pray for their family. Lift your voice and pray for this man and woman of God with all your might. Declare to him the light of Revelation Church will never go out. to you tonight the Bible says the days of the righteous they grow brighter and brighter amen this house grows brighter and brighter amen revelation nation grows brighter and brighter amen prophet Lovie and prophetess Maggie they grow brighter and brighter amen. your amen is way too small shout it out shout it out
Now quickly before I have my seat and I turn this over to Apostle Gershon, there's one other thing that I want to do tonight. And I want you just, somebody that's in your row, I want you to join hands with them quickly. I'm coming through quickly. I'm not going to touch everybody. I'm going to touch somebody that's in your row. Listen to me. If this does not happen, tell Prophet Lovey, don't bring that New Yorker back. Did you hear me? Tell him that guy's a liar. I want to declare to you before the week is out, there are going to be hundreds of testimonies that light has come. Light has come. Listen to me. I want you guys, maybe one of the worshipers, come up, just begin to sing something. Let's worship the Lord quickly, but hold hands with somebody, and I'm coming by, and I'm going to just say, let there be light. And light is hitting the whole row. Light will hit the whole row. Hallelujah. Let's go.
Hallelujah. 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 Oh, such a powerful time in the presence of the Lord. Let's put our hands together for our apostle. Hallelujah. Apostle, we love you, we love you, we love you. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice with me. Father, we thank you for answered prayer today. We thank you for the shift in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, everything that we came today for, believing you, as our apostle has declared it, we thank you and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, you can do better than that. Glory to God. I want you to get your offering ready, your sacrifice ready, and as you ready it, even online, as you lift it before the throne of grace, I want you to begin to thank God that as long as there is seed time, that also you are going to taste the harvest. So as you come forth with that seed, with that offering, I want you to celebrate God and thank him for the harvest. Look to the directions of the ushers as the praise and worship team leads us with a song and a dance. Hallelujah.
Jesus' face to shine upon you. Go from this place knowing that you are the light. Hallelujah. And the light shines where the darkness is. God bless you. And we'll see you on Sunday. Make sure you invite a friend and family. God bless you. Amen. grow and be encouraged at being their best selves. A place where it's about more than just being single. It's about having fun, being equipped, and embracing the principles of God in singleness. I'm Apostle JT Boyd. And I'm Evangelist Elena Boyd. And we're so thrilled to reintroduce to you SOLO, the Singles Ministry. SOLO stands for Singles on Lookout, on Lookout for Purpose, Elevation, Growth, and Community to stay in the loop about the amazing events, activities, and all things solo, go to revelationchurchla.org to sign up. All right, listen, we're ready to start this journey with you.